Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. everybody, welcome back once again to another episode of The Art of Photography. I'm your host, Ted Forbes. Remember, you can follow us on the Twitter now. If you just want to follow me, my handle is at Ted Forbes. Or if you want to follow the podcast, that handle is at AOP underscore podcast. Today we are talking about black and white conversion. And if you're shooting digitally, um, how do you get that photo that's color into a black and white world and what are your options for doing that and we're going to go over a lot of those today. Um, one thing I want to note in uh, this big mystery but sometimes I film these out of order and one thing I realized I was saying in the future which you're about to see is that um, I go back and forth between referring to um, film photography where you use film and a lot of times you will use a filter in front of the lens and it's really kind of a similar technique it's to what we're going to do where we're dealing with channels and you're going to see what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about putting a filter in front of the lens I'm talking about black and white film photography. Um, I would not recommend using filters for black and white digital photography and I would also not recommend shooting monochrome, that's just my opinion. Um, I think the, you're going to get the most options when you shoot a color image as you're going to see in a second and you're in a very non-destructive way able to alter that color into a black and white image. So anyway come on over without further ado and let's have a look. So when we're talking about conversion from color images to black and white images, I think it's really important, first of all, to understand how light works and how that conversion can happen. And I've prepared a document here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this channels document that I made here. And while this is not really exciting, all you basically you can see that we have uh, red, blue, and green on the top, um, just color swatches. And on the bottom, I put cyan, magenta, and yellow, so you can kind of see how these fall as well. Now, typically, um, a color space for a computer screen, we're dealing with uh, what's known as the RGB color space, or red, gr blue, gr excuse me, red, red, green, blue, they're out of order here. Uh, so these top three colors. Now I actually tone these back so they'd be a little more like what you would see in an image. They're not like really a hard bright red or a bright blue anyway. Um, so for our purposes here, um, light is uh, basically a combination of those three channels, a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And those three channels pick up those colors. And when they mix together, that's what you get for these in-between tones, for instance, the cyan, magenta, and yellow. Uh, now don't get this confused with the printing process because it's completely different. That's not what I'm talking about here. Um, what I'm going to do is, so you just so you can see this down here, um, if I go next to the layers palette, and I'm in Photoshop CS5 here, if I go over to the channels palette here, uh, this allows me to isolate each one of those channels to see what's going on. So right now all the channels are selected and I'm seeing the combined image. Now when I select the red channel, and I'm just looking at basically what falls in, you know, the light that's captured in reds here, you can see that the red actually went a lot lighter. Uh, the greens, uh, blues went a little bit darker. Uh, consequently, when I click on the green channel to isolate that, you can see that the greens went lighter. The reds went really dark and blue sits in the middle. And you can probably guess what happens when we select the blue channel is the blue is going to lighten up. And there it did. And so this is basically, um, you know, if you just convert an image to black and white without really kind of being able to have some control over it, you have no control over what those reds are going to go, if they're going to go lighter or darker, what the blues are going to do, greens, etc. And so that's really important to understand when you're doing color conversions. Um, let's look at another example here. Let's open up this image that we did last time. This was the our little HDR example where I combined some exposures to bring uh, highlights down and, and boost the shadows a little bit. And uh, when I actually isolate the channels on this image, you can see that the red channel looks one way, the green channel looks a different way, and the blue channel looks even further than that. Now, one thing to understand here is I want you to look down on the lower right-hand side of this image. We have this sculpture here is red, and the grass is essentially green. It's a little uh, muddy in this photo. But when I click on something like the blue channel, you can expect both the green and the red to go dark, and sure enough, they do. So that's what the blue channel selected. When I go up to the red channel, you're going to see that they lighten up a bit. And so being able to control this in your conversion is extremely important. Um, this works a lot the same way that if you were shooting traditional black and white film, uh, you can control this uh, right in the camera. And a lot of people, because the film is red sensitive, will use red filters or kind of shades thereof. So a yellow filter um, moving to an orange or a red. And this does two things. One, it will lighten up reds. And two, it also creates contrast because it ends up darkening the other colors in the spectrum as well. 
and so because of the way the film is sensitized, uh, this works really well um, for people who shoot black and white is to use a filter over the lens. Uh, typically, like I said, a red filter is going to give you the most contrast. You can also do things like if you're shooting a still life and you've got apples and you want to brighten them up, and I've done this before, you can use that red filter so then that black and white conversion uh, from the real apple that is red into the film, which is black and white, um, it becomes a lighter shade of gray than if you use something like a blue filter, which you could do too. Um, there are different options there. So let's uh, talk about how we convert this image to black and white. And we have a bunch of different options here. And uh, typically, I've had people ask me before about this. And, you know, kind of one of the things everybody thinks to do is if you go under image, you can go under adjustments and you can go desaturate. And that just basically Photoshop does what it needs to do. It just uses an average and, and, and goes. Um, this image doesn't look terrible, but um, I found that most of the time when you just use this desaturating feature, uh, it, things do look bad. Um, fortunately, in more modern versions of uh, Photoshop, um, the options are more obvious for other things. The other thing that's wrong with this, um, not only does it usually look bad, but it's completely destructive. So I have changed the image permanently from a color image to a black and white image. And so if I save it, there's no going back and playing with that conversion at all. So let's undo that for a second, make it a color image again. And we can look over here on this adjustments palette here, and there is a, a wide uh, variety of adjustments that we can do to this. Um, we can, uh, um, you can actually add a black and white layer, and I'll come back to that in a second. But the first one I'll show you, if you add a gradient map here, what it does is you can see on my layers palette is it added an adjustment layer, which means I can turn this layer on and off. And that's great because I want to be able to control it. It's not permanent, okay? Um, for my taste, just adding a gradient map, um, sometimes this works well in this case I don't think it did it, it made things go dark that I was rescuing via using an HDR technique anyway mainly a lot of the detail over here behind the sculpture and the grass stuff like that so that's probably not the best option I want to use so I, I'm just going to hide that layer for a second so we can compare if we want to um, when we come back um, another <coughs> common method that we've seen the last couple versions of CS um, the creative suite probably from CS2 on is to do what's called a channel mixer okay and if I select the channel mixer icon here um, we're going to get a channel mixer now, what I need to do is I need to select this monochrome box. Otherwise, it's going to actually work on blending colors, and we don't want to blend colors. We want to create a black and white image. So if I select the monochrome, um, a tick box there, you can see that we've made a monochrome image. Now, there are basically um, three sliders, one for your red channel, one for your green channel, and one for your blue channel. So what I can do is if I turn the reds up, you're going to notice it brightens the image, but it also mainly in this sculpture over here that is red, it brings that up. Um, if I take the blue down, you know, you can see you can work with this a little bit. Same with the green. You're going to notice that if you go too high on these, and I'm going to purposely crank them up, you can see I get a little warning here, and it says that I'm basically 259% over. And let me explain what that means. First of all, you can see in the image that we're completely blowing highlights at this point. Um, probably to the, you know, and let me say this too, your eye is always the final judge. And if you like this look for whatever reason, then that's fine. Um, you know, Photoshop doesn't uh, electrocute you if you go above, but it is giving you a warning. And basically what it's saying is each one of these sliders needs to total to 100% of the total image. And so, you know, if you're playing with them and, and that bothers you, you can, you can always realize that, say, I'm still 144 over and I need to darken one of these channels um, to come down. There are also a series of presets that come in here. And they're very, at the very top of this tab where you see Channel Mixer. I can go up and basically here's black and white with a blue filter. And these are simulating what you would have done with a film camera. Um, so here's the red filter where you can see that we do bring out the sculpture a little bit. If I go down here and select uh, a blue filter, you can see that it darkens that. And remember, that's when we looked at those channels, that's what's going on. So there are different kind of conversions you can get. So, so far we've just dealt with the conversion itself. And I can look at what orange looks like. I kind of like the red actually in this case. Um, and then at this point, what I could do is actually go in and start with curves adjustments and things like that to, you know, fine tune my contrast, highlights, things of that nature. Um, so don't get the, um, the actual black and white conversion confused with uh, with actually going in and treating the image because they really are kind of two different things. So let's turn that layer off for a second. One other option that you have here that they put in uh, in the new version is this black and white adjustment layer. And what it does is when you first select it, it does the same conversion as if I just desaturated the layer of the image. And this is fine, but what it does is it kind of combines that with kind of a different version of the channel mixer here so I can actually go in and tweak levels. So like you can see when I just adjust the red slider, look at how that sculpture brightens up. 
And if I can bring that all the way up, that may be a little too much. It looks a little surreal. But uh, anyway, I can go in and actually fine tune based on this. And for this night image, this works really well. And uh, one of the things I like about it is I was able to isolate that red because they've separated it out from magentas and stuff like that. So anyway, so those are just a couple things to think about when you're actually converting an image. So let's look at another image here. I'm going to open up the image of this water tower here and we'll mess with this a little bit. Now, what I want to do is let's do a black and white conversion on here and we'll actually, I'll show you some editing here too as well. So you can see that, you know, the idea again, um, you know, we did some stuff about zone system, how to apply that to digital. You want to pre-visualize. That was kind of the underlying theme of, of Ansel's zone system was being able to, what do you want in the end and how do you achieve that? And, you know, we'll use Ansel as our example here. Um, one of the things that you see a lot in Ansel's work, especially, um, you know, these really um, dramatic landscapes with skies in them where he has these really dark skies, uh, you know, the monolith piece. There, there's some really wonderful examples of that. And what Ansel did is he used, uh, because of the sensitivity of his film, he would use a really heavy red filter on that, one of those Rattan filters, and to really darken up that sky. And we can kind of simulate that a little bit with the digital stuff if we use a um, the channel mixer on that. And so remember, using the red filter, you're going to lighten your reds, but you also darken your blues. If I go into the channel mixer and I select one, let's select monochrome, and I'll go in and select the red filter preset so it's just all red, 100% red. Um, you can see that it did in fact darken the sky, but not quite enough. And a lot of that has to do with the time of day that I shot this and the shade that you have with the sky. And so what I'm going to do is let's let's go ahead and throw that layer away here because what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the black and white adjustment layer. And I'm going to show you how this differs because I think this is a really good example. Now remember, if we increase the reds, we darken the blues and greens a little bit. And when I move the slider, it doesn't do that. In fact, it just isolates the reds. So the black and white adjustment layer is a really cool kind of uh, uh, play on the concept of the channel mixer, but it really isolates these colors a little bit so you can go in here and get a lot more control over them than you can with just the channel mixer and you can see that I can create some of the contrast and detail in the water tower so I'm going to bring that back just a little bit and then what I'll do to darken that sky is actually bring down the blues okay so it, it's a little more obvious isolation but you can see one of the problems that I have when I bring them down all the way is that I start to get a lot of noise in the sky and it, it, that's kind of unfortunate one of the pitfalls I can probably compensate by bringing the cyan's down a little bit too in fact I can but again you got to watch out for the noise threshold there and and, uh, but that's going to get me close enough. And then what I would do is start editing this image from here. And I'll show you some techniques I would use for something like that. So we've got it close. I've got um, you know, fairly good contrast and drama in these clouds. In fact, they blow out in a couple spots, but that's okay. Um, and then the sky went went a lot darker, which is what I wanted. And it didn't affect the water tower in the middle too much. Okay, now what I'm going to do from here is show you a couple things you can do with editing uh, that kind of simulate darkroom stuff. And we'll get more into this in another podcast, but I want to just show you a little bit today. If I create a new layer... And what I'm going to do is select the gradient tool here. And when I select the gradient tool, make sure up at the top you have the gradient selected. It's, if you're working along, it's going to be black to transparent, not black to white. It's real important because we don't want to color the whole image. And so basically, I'm just going to draw a gradient in this top right-hand corner of the sky and bring that in just a little bit. And I'll do the same in the bottom here. Bring that in. Maybe a little too heavy. Let's bring it in a little more. And it kind of takes a light touch to kind of bring in these corners because uh, whatever point you begin the gradient at is where hard black is and wherever you end it is where complete transparency is. So you want to be a little bit lightweight with this, but that's the idea. Let's see, it's too dark. I'm going to bring it back a little bit and start off the image. That's a little better. Uh, in fact, let's come way off. See, I'm moving my black point further away. There we go. So there's there's kind of a nice darkening. Now, what I did is I actually physically painted. Let's turn these off so you can see. I painted uh, kind of a vignette onto this image and just did that, you know, by applying a black and, and a gradient to it. Um, but what I want to do here is actually I'm going to go. I'm going to change the layer type here. By the default, the layers are set to normal. If I select this and go down and create an overlay layer, now what this does is rather than just paint black over the top, it's going to keep some of the contrast in. So you're not going to lose some of these clouds that bleed off the edge. And then what I'll do is I'm going to bring my opacity all the way down to zero and start bringing it back in until I start seeing a little bit of darkening, a little bit of sense of that drama that I'm looking for. And that looks pretty good right about there. I'd probably go in and darken the sky even a little more. And at this point, I probably want to go into that uh, layers adjustment and back off of those blues and cyan's because I am seeing the noise still. There we go. That's, that's a little better. And I'm getting the effect where it's going to a black around the sides, which is which is what I want. And so remember, using an overlay type layer will give you a simulation of burning. Um, you know, something you would do in the dark room with an enlarger and paper. Um, I'm going to create another new layer and let's do a overlay layer here as well. And what I'm going to do is actually go in and bring out some detail in these clouds. So I'm just going to pick the 
the brush tool. I'm going to leave it at black. I would go up to the top and make sure your flow is set to about 53%. I wouldn't do it on at a full 100 because it will just uh, be a little too heavy, I think. So 53% allows you to just sketch and give a little more control. So what I'm going to do is go through here and kind of color in and, and enhance some of the contrast in these clouds. Okay, I don't want to paint them black, but I want to, you know, increase the contrast between the whites and the blacks. I'm not going to be too careful with this. Now, if I were doing a real image and not just a tutorial, I would probably take a lot more fine tuning than this and not be talking as I'm going. But you get the idea. Um, I'll go through here and paint around some of these. I just want to get that contrast going. Okay, now you can see it's a little too heavy. But again, if I bring the opacity back down to zero and I start creeping back in until I start seeing a little bit of that texture come back in, a little bit of that that heightened contrast in those clouds. That looks pretty good. Um, you could also do the opposite of burning, which would be dodging. And in this case, I'll create another new layer. And what I'm going to do here is actually you could paint this or I'm going to select the, um, the the elliptical marquee tool, which is under the marquee tool here. And I'm going to feather that out at 100, 100 pixels. And what the feather means is in, when I draw this, you'll see I'm going to hold down option shift and I'm going to put a light around the water tower here. And let's bring that down a little bit. Now on my new layer, if I hit um, uh, Option, excuse me, Command Delete, it's going to color it white. And uh, let's deselect that. Now, obviously, I don't want that in my image. That's not too good looking. But if I go down to the layers, and this time, rather than say overlay, you can do overlay, and it works. Um, but you can also do a soft light, which will kind of have a little bit more subtle effect on it. And I'm going to bring back the opacity once again to zero, and just start bringing that up till I have a little bit of highlight on there. And you really don't need much. It's going to be around 20%. And let me go ahead, and I can move that layer around so you can see how it affects stuff around it. So what I've done is just add a little punctuation, a little accent to the actual water tower to bring it out a little bit. So this has been a quickie, but I just wanted to show you how your color conversion makes the editing a lot easier if you get it close. If that sky were really light, I'd have to do a lot of work to darken it and bring that contrast out between that and the clouds. So that's really important is what kind of conversion you pick for that. So let's go back to the beginning. Let me turn off all these layers so you can see. Here's our original image. I used a black and white adjustment layer, and I brought, as you can see on here on the tab, I brought the, the cyans and the blues down as much as I could. And one thing that's nice about this layer is it's non-destructive, okay? After that, I, I created a vignette by adding some gradients to an overlay layer and set that layer to be, um, excuse me, set the layer to be overlay. So we got a burning effect. So this is something I would simulate on in larger. And like I said, we'll get more into this later. Uh, next thing I did is I put some accents into those clouds there, which you can see another overlay layer with bl some black paint on it. And then finally, I did a little white highlight to bring up, just punch the water tower just a little bit and uh, give a little more light to it. So anyway, again, it's a really quick way of doing this, but I want you to see how, you know, paying attention to how that conversion works can really help um, when editing the final image. Okay, so that's just a little bit on conversion of black and white images. We're going to go uh, do more podcasts in the future about actually manipulating the images. But as you can see, it's really important when you're bringing a color image in. And you could do this with color film as well. But to leave those options uh, at the end of the line to get to be able to manipulate things within the image color-wise into your black and white, depending on whether you want a darker shade of gray or a lighter shade of gray. So anyway, um, that's just basically a little bit on conversion. I hope that you found that informative. And thank you once again for watching.